28 years, I worked at Marion at the Hub. It was the Learning Center, and it just felt right to call this new project, this new chapter of my life, the Color Hub. And we're going to be doing um, painting tutorials and watercolor and oils and pastels and all sorts of things. So join us. Today we're going to be doing a chickadee. Um, oops, wine. And we love wine. Um, so join us in that as well. Or tea or whatever you'd like. Uh, today we're doing a lovely chickadee. I paint a lot of chickadees. Um, and I'm going to be using my Daniel Steel. Daniel Steel. <laughs> My Daniel Smith paints. <laughs> I have not been drinking long. I promise you. <laughs> it's a hot day out. It's, it's a hot it's day. Like 80 degrees. I'm tired. <laughs> um, we're going to be using my Daniel Smith paints and my um, Creative Mark Mimic uh, brushes that I absolutely love. Uh, you can get these at Jerry's Artorama or online at Amazon they both sell them so um, and you can get them in packs um, I don't know if you can make links I'll try it. yeah I'll try to but you can look right online and get these and they work they're probably my favorite brushes now <laughs> I love them and I also have a uh, apple twig from our apple tree <laughs> that I um, sharpened with a pencil sharpener that I also use to get different uh, textures and lines. So let's see if this works out. All right. I have my two uh, pots of water, one dirty water and one clean water. I have my palette that I will mix up my paints with. Most of my paints I like to mix up on my, um, my paper. And today I'm using Shinzan paper. Today it's a uh, rag paper made in India. It's 100% um, cotton. And the rag is um, long strands of cotton. And it just does really remarkable things with the paint. And uh, you'll see once we start painting. So I'm going to first take some clean water. And I think we'll start with the chickadee. And we're just going to water some areas of the chickadee. Now, what's the purpose of watering the paper first? Um, water the paper first so that um, the paint can flow. What happens if you forget to water the paper? Well, the paint will just stick. It won't have any place to go. So it'll almost be like kind of a chunky look. Yeah, here's a here's a piece of um, paper here. I'll show you what happens. Now my paintbrush is wet though. But I've got some paint here. So this is what's gonna happen if your paint, if your paper is not wet. The paint has no place to go. So now I'm going to water this area and drop the same paint in and see what happens. Oh, I get a spreading yeah. kind of bleedy look to it. Yeah, the paint has some place cool. to go. And the paint is not going to go any place that you have not watered. I put too much water there. Mm -hmm. But say I water a square here. All of this is dry here. The paint is only going to go where I have water. It's not going to go onto the dry spots. See? Very cool. Mm -hmm. this. And if you get too much water, like I did right there, you take a dry brush and you just lay it along that and you can sop it up very cool yep good technique yes okay 
Now you don't want to over wet it. So what I just did right now was I took my dry brush and I sopped up some more of that water. I do, I am going to water the entire bird and let the water soak into the paper. I hope you can see, I already drew the bird. I hope you can see the drawing. Yeah, it shows up really well. Oh, does it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I am trying to stick within the lines because just what I showed you there, the paint will only go as far as where I am putting the water. It's not going to go outside of the bird. Sometimes I do the um, outside first to do the um, background. background first, but today I decided I want to try the bird first. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to let that water just soak in there for a bit. And I'm going to decide what colors I want to do my bird. And I think I'm going to do some really different colors today. Um, Daniel Smith has some amazing colors and you can see that I really like Daniel Smith colors. Um, he has some, this is probably one of my favorite colors of Daniel Smith. It's called kyanite and it actually sparkles because of the mineral that is ground up to make this uh, paint. Um, so I want to incorporate it somewhere along the cap of the bird in the black so that when um, you see the painting, it'll look like the sun is shining on the black. Um, this is your favorite color. The oh, okay. One that sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to save those colors for the branches. And I did notice you labeled all of them so that you can actually remember oh, the colors you're using. And, absolutely, yeah. you have to. So let's see what we've got here. Um, I'm trying to decide what I want to do first. If I want to do the dark first. Now what is this you're doing with putting it on the palette? Well, right now, notice I have a white palette so that I can see the colors. Right now, I'm trying to mix some colors. I want to mix a dark color. Let's see if I can turn the flesh on and see if the oh. color shows up a little bit better. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can see the sparkles of the kyanite. Can you see that? Can you see it on the sparkle? Uh, when you move the brush, you can see a little bit at the edge of the brush. Yeah. So I'm almost trying to make, that's your kyanite, I'm going to try to make a black. I don't want to use a, um, like a black, a store-bought black. I'm trying to make one, uh, make a black. So out more of, of like a natural black? Yeah, out of a few different colors. That's pretty. And I think I'll put a little bit of brown in there too, huh? I think my colors dried up. I um oh that's pretty. Um, I'm gonna put that up here. Ooh, that's pretty. I love to see the paint spread. This is the best part of watercolor. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have painted, watered all of it. And if you do something silly like I just did, you can just take a paper towel and blot it. And blot it. Probably should have just um, watered the first part, the black parts, but I didn't. <laughs> but I do want this chickadee to, be, chickadee to be a loose painting. Now, what does that mean, loose painting? Um, it's not going to be like um, a perfect rendering, like a botanical rendering, or um, you know, it's going to be flowing. The colors are going to be more blending together. So the whites are going to be blending with the blacks and it's just going to look very natural. I got the idea for doing a chickadee this morning because 
when I had the dogs outside, the bird feeder was empty <laughs> and um, the chickadees were outside reminding me that they had not been fed yet. I had not watered everything, but yeah, we gotta work with what you got. <laughs> and then people can see what happens if they do too much, or yeah, don't make Michelle's mistake <laughs> on the first tutorial. <laughs> So right now I'm using the number 12 round. I like to use um, the largest paintbrush that I can get away with. It keeps you loose. Um, and I like a looser painting rather than um, a really tight rendering, a, a exact renderings. I like um, I like more loose renderings of paintings. They're more fun. And I just think they're prettier. It's like coloring outside the lines. <laughs> Except for here, it's acceptable. <laughs> I'm going to teach Lorelei to color outside the lines. Oh, I can do that with no problem. <laughs> Did somebody come home? Oh, no, we're gonna have to pause this. Okay, we're back. We have an addition to our household. Another dog came. <laughs> My grand puppy. All right, so um, I just did this um, before Shannon came back on. Um, what you might want to do, uh, your paint's dry. Uh, in between painting so I got a spray bottle and I just give my paints a quick spray to reactivate them so you might want to do that as well um, give them a second and then they're just ready to go again just give them a quick brush now if like you accidentally walked away for a day and didn't cover them and they just dried out completely is that okay like you can just keep adding water or... oh yeah okay. and um these paints on my palette, if they're mixed, um, like specifically for this um, painting, I would probably, unless I knew I was doing another chickadee, I would probably just wash the palette. But um, if I have a lot of raw sienna, say pure raw sienna on my palette, I would keep it because it's still good. Um, a lot of new painters think that you know they have to clean their palette each time no <laughs> in fact a lot of uh dirty palettes are good if you're doing backgrounds or something don't get rid of your paint i mean watercolor is very expensive when you get into professional watercolor um these tubes of daniel smith are not cheap some of them are 40 bucks or more wow uh, yeah <laughs> so do not get rid of them <laughs> just saying all right, now, um, right here, I'm gonna just give this spot right here a little spray because I want this to spread when I put down this. I want this to just do its own little thing right here. See how pretty that is? Mm -hmm. And I wanna put some down here on its, I'm gonna spray that one though. That's, I think that's just really pretty. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. And then I can just guide some of it too. All right. And then down in here, I'm gonna want a little bit more. It's not gonna be pure white. So I'm gonna want a little bit more of this gray, but I don't want as much as the black and the gray here. So I think I'm gonna spray this as well. And then drop in some of this that we've already used. 
just so that it can spread and do its own thing. And I might even take some of this kyanite that's a little more on the blue side. See how that's a little more blue? Take some of that kyanite on its own. Wash my brush off and dry it. I'm, I just steal towels out of the boys' garage. <laughs> they have tons. They never miss them. <laughs> and then I'll just take that kyanite, which is a little bit of blue, and I will spread that up from the belly into this. That's blue. Pretty white. So on this bird, we're not going to see each individual feathers or anything like that. We're just going to see like um, uh, kind of like the overall appearance. Yeah. Just going to get the overall look. We're going to use our imagination for what he's going to look like. A little bit more kyanite, that blue. Maybe a little bit of hematite, which is a little bit of gray, more gray brown. Underneath his belly here where it would be shaded. You can see what I mean about this paper. It um the paint goes into all of these little hollows. It's very rough paper. It's very pretty. That's nice because it already gives the animal a textured look as opposed to just flat. Yes. That's great. It's great for landscapes, for animals, for um, I just love this paper. At first I was not quite sure of it. Um, it takes the bit it needs to. <laughs> oh, I overpainted that. Oh. Well, I think I'm going to leave it actually. If I can go in with some white afterwards. Do you hear those dogs? <laughs> Felt like I needed to put a disclosure that there's not monsters in the house. <laughs> just a dog snoring. It's just our dog snoring. And pretty soon the baby will be awake. <laughs> I can hear her rustling. 
maybe she won't win the battle. We can pause the video anytime if I need to. Yep. Just wait a couple just seconds me, and then uh, just let me know. Okay. All right. Let's pause it in just a second here. As soon as you're done with this line, if that's okay. Okay. So we had to take a short little break because we had to uh, <laughs> take care of the baby and we had to uh, take care of the puppies really quick. So. Okay, so I'm going to use a little sepia here to try to uh, darken up this bird and a little bit of paint spray. We'll see how this works. I don't think I need the dog hair on that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is optional. <laughs> it is optional, but... It's so hot in here today that my glasses are fogging up. I love that. <laughs> Whoa. They're all paint stains. Anyways. <laughs> what are the job hazards? So you're just working on the outline and blending? Yep. Just blending a little, getting some of these colors. Kind of going together. See how you went over there and you just kind of brought the whole outline out to yep. fill it up. And now I'm taking some water, some a damp brush, and I'm going along the edges so I don't have a hard edge. And I'm letting that paint just move wherever it wants to go. So it can all just blend together. And I don't I think I want to do it here. I might do a little bit here. I'm going to be very careful. I don't want it to go into this white a whole lot, but I also don't want a really hard edge there. That might be very pretty though. Yeah, that's, that's kind of really pretty. Kind of pretty. Yeah, it does look pretty. I'm just going to try to brush some tail feather looks down in here. And I'm hitting some paper that isn't wet yet, so that's kind of going to be kind of pretty. And I'm going to brush it up into some that is wet, like right there. I got a glob of paint. That's kind of cool. Cool.
cool looking. I'm gonna take some yellow ochre. I love yellow ochre. I'm gonna just dab it right into here. And I'm gonna put a little bit thicker yellow ochre into there. It's kind of cool. Now before I do the feet, I think I'm going to work on the branch. And I'm kind of come back when um, the bird is wet, or <laughs> when the bird is dry, I'm going to come back and do a little bit of poofy feathers um, with a very fine paintbrush. But right now I think I'm going to work on the branch. So I'm going to dampen the branch a little bit. And this is going to be just very, um, like a broken, old, mossy looking branch. Yeah. You see how this bird turns out? How many, uh, how many, um, interruptions have we had? <laughs> just too so far. <laughs> but I think see. people understand because now this is portraying what it's like if you have a real house with <laughs> other responsibilities and obligations that you have to tend to. Yeah. So you're not necessarily going to sit and do it all in one sitting. No, starting a business at home, <laughs> taking care of a baby and grand puppies and puppies of your own. <laughs> And I'm just learning how to do watercolor as it is <laughs> with a traumatic brain injury, which is why I had to stop working at the hub. Now you got a new hub. I have a new hub. <laughs> I think I wanted to try these colors. And when you're painting, um, try to continue to use the same colors over and over to unify your painting. Don't like use all of the colors as tempting as that is, because <laughs> they're so beautiful. Oh. Oh. It's okay, baby. You can stop if you need to stop. Well, when you're at a stopping point, let me know. We can pause. It's okay. I know you want to blend it, so. It's okay. I can I can blend this anytime. Okay, I'm gonna. And Michelle's just been spreading some more of the branch. Nothing really crazy. She's been using basically the same color she made. I wanted to see if I like the color, basically. It's <laughs> playing around. You can just take the paint off your brush. And you can get a line like that. It's pretty cool. Go up against the bird. Get the paint away.
I don't think I'm going to put a background. I was going to do a background on this. Shane and I, I had discussed this. I think what I'm going to do instead now, because this white paper is so pretty, I think I'm going to just scatter some paint afterwards. That's okay. I'm blocking it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, uh, she's got country on. I'm not particularly fond of country, but it's to each their own. It's classic country. <laughs> it's <still> country. <laughs> Pretty sure people don't want to listen to what I listen to while they're painting, so. <laughs> it's good for writing, not for painting. This is my housework music. Can you shine it? Like, you want this <laughs> this, the lighting in this house is horrid. She likes the flash on the camera, so. And don't be afraid to move your paper around to wherever you need to move it so that you can see <laughs> where you have to paint, guys. I'm gonna just have to put those feet wherever because I can't see where I drew them. <laughs> okay. See how this paper is? It's just, it's like cloth. It's amazing. What you doing now? She's over there with her bottle picking her feet. Snoring. I'm like, oh, go <laughs> hurry. Goodness gracious. So you're moving the paper to get the water to go where you kind of want it to? Yeah.
Did I pick this down too much? <laughs> I just thought it's because he's shaking the whole house. <laughs> <laughs> Little 65 pound dog makes it sound like Godzilla's in the house. Oh my old lord child. Toby. Stop. Mommy's trying to paint and this is why I can't get anything done. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Mommy's painting. So are you doing that just to make the bird stand out a little bit more yep. from the white? Yep. And I just love this color. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me happy. It's actually a very nice looking chickpea. Thank you. Oh my. <laughs> I told you she's having... You get everything when you tune into us. <laughs> I mean, it's My real. baby has some tummy issues today. It is so real. <laughs> Most people don't have a fancy studio to work with, so they work with their animals and the kids and distractions, oh, and this is what you end up with. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So just because you have things going on at the house doesn't mean you still can't paint. <laughs> That's not an excuse. <laughs> Absolutely not. And I think we're going to do a little bit of spatter. And you're just protecting the bird? Yep. Now, if this gets on your tablecloth, is it washable? Or um, should you use like um, a, a trash cloth or something underneath? I have... Um, I have a plastic uh, liner. liner on top of my beautiful old table. Um, so yeah, some of these are not, some of these are um, staining pigments. So um, I am... Uh, so you want basically a, an old cloth or something that yeah. you don't mind getting stained if it does This stain. is like a uh, vinyl, it's not vinyl, but it's a... Um, tablecloth that is very washable so um I like it with a splatter yeah brings the focus on the chickadee what do you think guys I really like that you like that that's very cool so I think with all the distractions today <laughs> we're gonna yeah. call it quits very cool I like that it's really nice thank you I'm just going to do a, a zoom in and so then people can see a little bit closer. And I think she just threw up. That's okay. <laughs> it's not and the first or the last time. All right. This painting will be for sale. And if you're interested, contact us and Shannon will give yeah. you all the information. As soon as it's dried, we'll put it in the frame. But right now with it being wet, it would not be a good idea. So very cool. All right. Thank you for tuning in to our initial show, our launching show, and we will be doing more of these. 
Um, and we will have a live show tomorrow, Wednesday night. Uh, November 11th. Mm -hmm. 7 p.m. still there. Uh, 7 or 6. I don't care. I think everybody <laughs> knows it's going to be 7, so we probably should keep it at that time. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.